To the slack line, uh, you are here with the boss. The boss is coming. With a made-up dumb fairy tale name, you. And uh, we are chatting. Uh, actually, we're doing a new format now. Fridays, we are talking sports. Um, almost actually exclusively going to be hockey. Friday hockey talk here on uh, on the slack line. Um, I love hockey. I do. Um, I pay attention to a lot of hockey really closely. It's part of my life, my family. Uh, my dad was a, was a Philadelphia Flyer in the 80s. Uh, I grew up playing and, and spent, uh, spent some of my 20s coaching, so I have a strong connection to the sport. And we are, uh, we are going to bring you uh, now every Friday just a, a recap of the weekly sports events. Um, I want to say sports events. It'll mostly be hockey, if I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, but as other sports news comes up, uh, you know, really major things, uh, I will talk about them uh, if I decide to get to them. But uh, today we're just going to talk some hockey. Uh, Jerry, who is bringing us our quote today, our sponsor today, uh, same from uh, same sponsor from back uh, on the full sports slack line with, uh, with Scooby and Lambo, the roommate, uh, bringing us our... Our quote today is James the Real Deal Neil's Wheel Squeal Seal, uh, bringing us into into our hockey talk uh, and the hot topics going on around the league now. Uh, trade deadline is happening. Uh, that's coming up here at the end of the month next week. Olympics going on. No NHL at the Olympics. That's an interesting scenario. Uh, Seattle uh, announced their team coming in. Um, or announce their bid for the expansion team. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the hilarity that is the Despicable Oilers, and uh, finally we will finish off with my boys, the Flames. Uh, first of all, let's get to the trade deadline talk. A um, few things are already happening around the league. Of course, the big one is the uh, LA-Ottawa deal. Uh, involving uh, Dion Phaneuf and Marion Gabrick, uh, Nate Thompson, and uh, Drew Shore. Not Drew Shore. Is it Drew Shore? Nick Shore. And Nick Shore. Um, honestly, I get the deal from LA's perspective, uh, especially with, uh, with um, Ottawa retaining salary on, uh, on Phaneuf, but uh, I don't get it from from Ottawa's perspective at all. I think Nate Thompson's a better player than Nick Shore is, and uh, and uh, Gabrick. I mean, maybe they can flip him for something else. Uh, I mean, it's not a piece that's going to help you in the future, and it doesn't help you cap wise. Um, it helps you money wise, but uh, I mean, if that's why you're making deals, then. Uh, you're already losing, in my opinion. And it's it's actually kind of sad to see a Canadian team that has to has to budget itself like that. Um, what else going on for the trade for the trade deadline? Uh, but specifically, Canadian teams, Montreal, uh, not having a great season. Word around town is that they're going to be looking to sell off some people. Uh, Pacioretty, Galchenyuk, uh, are names that have been thrown o- around quite a bit. Um, I'd like to see Gallagher personally come come our way. Um, uh, as a, from a Flames perspective, they're looking for a right winger, um, and but honestly, they're looking for a right winger that is actually right-handed. Uh, there's a lot of right wingers that are left-handed out there that people keep throwing into the mix for um, for uh, Calgary to pick up, but uh, I don't think that they're gonna 
but uh but honestly like this is one of the times that you actually do need a right-handed player they have like no right-handed players and you need somebody to shoot the puck from that offside so especially on the power play it's been suffering um i'd love to see them pick up a right-handed player we'll see how that goes uh but yeah uh i mean the trade deadline overall i don't think is as big a deal as it was pre-cap i think that it's taken a, a while longer than i thought it would but it's taken a while uh and and gms are ch- are finally starting to figure out that these deals just don't make sense and especially in this type of world um where you have to give up significant future assets that uh I mean, it wasn't as big of a deal when those assets, you could just buy them from other teams later on, basically. Uh, but now they get retained for so long, and it's so important to grow uh, good players within your own organization that uh, that it just doesn't make sense for people to be dealing, you know, first round pick and a high prospect for uh, for Rick Nash for a few months. Like that, it just doesn't make sense. So. Um, I think that uh, that those types of deals are gone as as much as the media would like them to to really really happen because they they drive interest towards their their deadline shows and stuff like that. But uh, I think largely those types of deals are are things of the past, and and more often than not, I think you'll start seeing uh, actually just like player for player swaps, like we've seen with uh, with Fanuf and and Gabrick and even Weber and and uh and Subban although those aren't uh those aren't deadline deals but uh you know I think those types of player to player deals are going to be more the um the blockbusters that happen rather than one player for a whole bunch of futures all right on to the olympics um honestly I don't I don't have a lot of interest for the olympics without the nhl there um it's kind of frustrating that they didn't end up going um especially considering like the fans all want them to go and the players all want them to go so why aren't they going um it's all about money really um and understandable reasons of money but also like it's just kind of shitty and i know a lot of older fans uh you know they don't really see it as that big of a deal because the Olymp- the nhl has only been going to the olympics since 98 but i mean for most people now that's how that's how we know the olympics you know that's what we got excited for and i was just talking with my roommate who's a huge hockey fan how we would totally be getting up at five in the morning four in the morning uh making pancakes and smoking weed and and getting ready to watch the game um skipping work calling in sick you know whatever the the case is um that's what we would be doing if it was if it was best on best if it was best on best uh, NHL players and it's just not. So it's, I mean, it can make it interesting from a different perspective, but uh, from a, from a hockey fans perspective and from a, the perspective of like, well, you want to showcase the best that you have on the world stage. No, um, it, it really sucks. Um, okay, on to Seattle. Uh, reports out of Seattle that uh, that they uh, have the arena deal going, and they have a they have officially confirmed their uh, their bid for an expansion team. They have to put in a ten million dollar deposit. Um, I think deadline is the, uh, is, uh, is March sometime, I want to say. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's looking, looking like Seattle's going to have a hockey team here in the next few years, which, uh, which I think will be great. Um, I've always thought that it was kind of weird that they didn't have one a while ago. Um, and I think it's a, it's a perfect place for, for a decent expansion team to grow and thrive and, um, I know that the that Seattle people they consider themselves kind of an an alternative group. Uh they really support their soccer there and uh and you know just kind of alternative music scenes and that type of stuff and and I think that will include a a love for hockey. 
uh, something different that comes into the city over football or baseball. So, um, yeah, really interested to see what happens there, uh, specifically to see what they name the team. There's a lot of w- kind of weird ones floating around. The uh, the Kraken is an interesting one. Um, Pilots is coming up. Um, I would like it to be something to do with music. Um, people have suggested the grunge. I don't know if I like that, but um, there's a lacrosse team in Canada called the the Toronto Rock, and I think that's really cool. Uh, they probably wouldn't be able to get the rights to that because of that team, but um, I think it would be pretty sweet to have a, a Seattle team that is music-themed, kind of like the Blues in St. Louis. Um, as somebody that lives in Vancouver now and um, is hates the Vancouver Canucks, it'd be cool to be able to take trips down to Seattle to see the see the team down there uh, within a, a few short years. So, um, on to my favorite thing, which is a little bit of Oilers bashing. Um, the Oilers raised a banner, had a big fucking ceremony for, um, a fan, an online fan vote for having the greatest team ever, um, like the 87, I think, Oilers or something, uh, and they raise a banner to the rafters, you know, mid-season when they're not in the playoff race, and it's just, it's fucking embarrassing, um, the media s- still there is just like, it's, it's Russian propaganda worthy, like, if you really read some of uh Bob Stoffer and uh Terry Jones and Mark Spector like just an embarrassing amount of homerism and I don't know if like if they're afraid of getting fired from their job if they're too critical of the team or something but it's just you know it, it there's constant just hyping about stuff that doesn't matter uh, Bob Stoffer just posted that they're like 4-0 and o against the top three teams in the Western Conference this year. And it's like, oh, so who fucking cares? Your team sucks. Like, they're at the bottom of the league. It doesn't matter. <laughs> what 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 point is there to, to bring that up? Um, you know, normally I don't really take joy in in teams like despair like this for, for maybe lack of a better term because um, I do like to see like waves, ebbs and flows of of success and uh, different teams getting into the mix and stuff like that in the NHL. I think it makes it more interesting. But the Oilers are like this kid that has been telling everybody how tough they're, they're going to be next summer every year. And, and every year they come and they, they try to pick on everybody on the playground and just get their ass kicked. And, and every year they keep talking about how they're going to kick everybody's ass next year. And it's just getting tired and old and sad. And I'd like them to just shut up and play hockey and stop telling me about how great fucking McDavid is and how great their team is without having any significant touch to greatness at all. I mean, even McDavid, like he's like he's fast and he's good, but he's not a complete player. He's not Sidney Crosby. He's not Jonathan Taves. Like he's not he's not driving a championship team the way that he plays. Um, and, uh, like I see it a lot because he's in Edmonton and we see a lot of Edmonton games and highlights and, um, you know, more so than most. And, and yeah, definitely a phenomenal player, but, um, he's got a lot of work to do to be a, a championship level player for sure. I think, and like their cap situation with paying Drysaitel eight point five and and McDavid twelve or thirteen or whatever it is like it's so it's fucking ridiculous it's they're never you're never gonna be able to build build a competitive team like it's just not gonna be the case because you'll you won't be able to get surrounded by good players like I always wonder why why players don't see this more when in contract negotiations and the GM's like, look, okay, the market says you're worth 10 or worth 12. But if I pay you that, then I can't pay anybody else anything. And uh, you're not going to be be winning Stanley Cups and Conn Smythes and, you know, whatever have you. We won't have these dynasty teams. You'll just be, you know, an extra $2 million a year richer for, for what? You know, when you're making six or eight or ten million dollars is it really that much of a difference between those things i i really don't think so to be honest and uh on to my boys the flames um 
the Flames, uh, they beat the Preds tonight. Really great game. I watched it. Uh, a lot of back and forth. The Preds are a great team. Fun to watch. Fun to watch in that building. Um, I just think that uh, got to give the, the Flames some love, especially Johnny Goudreau. He doesn't get as enough love as one of the top tier players in this league, especially contrasted with McDavid up the street. Um, who he is tied with or better than points with at at this point um, for second in the league. Like, the guy's a superstar. Mike Smith, uh, unfortunately injured right now, but I think should be getting Vesna consideration. I was pretty hesitant about bringing him in. Uh, I thought he was kind of older and washed up, and I didn't really want to stop gap. I wanted to uh either find a way to bring in a good young goalie that's proven or or see what we have in the system but i'm so glad they brought in smith and um he's been phenomenal um i think he should be uh, he probably shouldn't win the vesna i think that should go to vaskalevsky but i think he should definitely be in consideration uh kachuk i mean there's there's not much more you can say about him he's so he's such a throwback player such a troll on the isc he looks like uh, he looks like he took a player out of the '80s and and put him into the into today's game with with the same skill set and and uh, hockey IQ necessary um, to play in today's game and it, he he's just a lot of fun to watch and I'm glad he's on our team and I, like everybody says that y- they would hate him on any other team I don't think that I would I think I'd love watching him still. Uh, Except if he was on the Oilers, probably. If he was on the Oilers, I'd probably throw throw up in my mouth every time uh, every time he stepped on the ice. But mostly because he'd just be, like, killing us on the score sheet, uh, especially alongside McDavid. It would be really potent uh, in Edmonton if they if they had taken him. So thank you for not doing that. Uh, Riddich, uh, David Riddich, come in and solidify the backup position. He played fantastic tonight, especially after... Uh, making a bit of a goof and causing the third goal against that brought the Predators within one. Um, yeah, between him and John Gillies going forward, uh, Tyler Parsons and I guess Nick Schneider and a couple others in the system, hopefully the Flames can, can hit on one of those players in the next uh, year or so, uh, specifically with Riddich or Gillies. Um so that we don't have to rely on Smith after his his contract's done, and and uh, we can have you know a young mid twenties goalie going forward for for the next uh, decade. Uh, Backland not signed yet, uh, but showcasing out there against the Predators today um, and every day uh, why he should be getting locked up by this team. Um, Looks like, sounds like he will, considering uh, Tre Living's comments uh, between periods today, um, and uh, and the way that he's utilized on the ice. It's obvious that he's important to the team. It's been cool to watch him grow. Um, he took a, a while to come around, but he is definitely one of the the top tier two way uh, centermen in the game right now, and and that's pretty cool to watch. Um, like to get him locked up. Sounds like he's his contract demands are pretty reasonable, so um, hopefully he gets done and gets done at a at a nice number that that can uh, that the Flames can uh, can swallow going forward. Honestly, I think the only real disappointment I have with the Flames this year is Brody. Um, I'd say Brower, but I don't really expect much of him, uh, even though his salary is ridiculous. But watching Brody out there, it's like. Uh, it's like he's a rookie again. Like he's making mistakes that he was making it at twenty two, twenty three years old. That you're like, dude. Like I thought you were past this. I thought you, I thought you could, you know, uh, check behind you when skating towards the net now. And I thought you um, didn't make blind passes through the middle of your ice anymore. Like um, I thought he was beyond these types of things, and now he seems to have regressed a bit. And it's disappointing because I really, I really uh, like Brody and the way he plays. Or played. I know he's had some personal struggles with uh, with his uh, partner, wife, girlfriend. I'm not sure. I think they're f- they're uh, engaged or something. Um, but she's had some health problems, and I'm sure that's been uh, affecting him. And you know, they're people. Uh, we can't expect them to be robots. Uh, but uh, as far as his play on the ice goes, 
it's definitely uh, it left something to be desired through most of the year. So it's it's a good thing that uh, guys like Stone and Kulak have stepped up uh, uh, to play very well and uh, and kind of take some pressure off that Hammonick Brody pair. So, uh, but yeah, I think that's where we'll call it uh, for today. Uh, that is our first iteration of uh, of the Friday Sports uh, Slack line. Uh, brought to us again by James, the real deal, Neil's wheel, squeal, seal. Uh, got a squeal in your wheel. Uh, try to uh, get rid of that squeal with James, the real deal, Neil's wheel, squeal, seal. Uh, thanks to Crooked Spies for providing their tunes today. Um, and uh, make sure you're following the Slack line on Instagram at the.slack.line, on Twitter at slackline underscore radio. And on uh, iTunes and YouTube at the Slackline Podcast. Uh, you have been listening to The Boss. The Boss, boss is coming! That's a made up dumb f-ing fairy tale name, you f-ing. Thanks to anybody paying attention. Thanks to Jerry in the booth. Uh, and everybody, have a great week. Better run